So the, uh, the next note has been sent out. So if you don't have it, tap on the person next to you. Uh, let them send it to you. Okay. There's there are going to be a lot of scriptures tonight I'm going to use. Uh, so it's better for you to follow along uh, to, to be biblically accurate. Okay. Because we're a biblically accurate church. Okay. Yes. Okay. So tonight we're talking about how to build a close relationship with God. See, one of the most important aspects of becoming a Christian is to have a close relationship, a personal relationship with the Holy God that saves you from your sin. So, although God is invisible to us mortals, He can become the most reliable, most trusted, and most loving reality in your life. I want to ask you guys, do you believe it? Today, do you believe that today? Yeah. King David, he poetically described his experience about God's greatness and God's nearness to us. Psalms 139, 7 to 14. Say so that, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, but darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that for well. See, David was inspired by God's omnipresence. He is everywhere. Wherever you go, he will be there next to you if you call on him. He is impressed. He's inspired by God's omniscient, his all-knowing, his all-wisdom, and his omnipotent, his all-powerful. Yeah. When God, when, when people is not close to God, see, they like to think that, well, God is so far from me. Right. He'll never really reach out to me and help me. So why bother calling on God when he would not answer me? Mm. But God never forgets about us, and that is a fact. We may forget about him. We may not choose to call on him, but he never remember, and he never forgets about us. Okay. He's always available to you if you. Deuteronomy 4, 29. Ooh, but God. if from there you seek the Lord your God, you'll find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. Yes. It never matters how far away you are from God or how far away you think you feel that you are from God. If you turn towards God and start walking this way with perseverance and trust in His direction wholeheartedly, He promised that you will be able to find Him. So the question becomes, not that will God come to us, it is, are you seeking God? Are you pursuing God? Are you heading in God's decision, wow. uh, in, in God's direction? Wow. And are you doing that with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your being. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God is always good. The psalmist here, it wrote 73 uh, verse 28. But as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge. Mm -hmm. See, hopefully every single day you're learning how good God is and how good it is to be near this God. Uh -huh. Well, how often do you think of in all the other religions God is close to men. You almost never think yeah. about that. But yeah. God created the whole entire universe. Yeah. He is with you right now. Come on. Come on. A relationship with God begins with God calling us, drawing us towards Himself. John 6, 44. No one can come near to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. Right. After God calls us, though, He expects us on, from then on to initiate, to right. seek out to Him, to draw ourselves near to Him. Yes. And if we do, there is a very encouraging promise to you. Right. James 4, 8, come near to God and He will come near to you. Right. See, a good way to think of this scripture is that God, he, never in your life will He push you, will He force you to believe in Him. Mm -hmm. Never in your life will He do that. But He is always reaching out His hand. So if you are trying to seek Him, 
grab onto that hand and he will lead you closer and he will guide you towards your great destiny. Come on, Jackie! We will be with him in heaven. The promise of a resurrection life after death becomes a primary motivator for our uh, for ourselves Christians. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 7, 19. A better hope is introduced by which we draw near to God. Wow. See, this lesson, we are going to cover some specific ways to develop and maintain a close relationship with God. So today's lesson, we're going to have nine points. Okay, we're going to have nine short points, but very, very specific and practical, useful points for you to do so. Okay? Make sure you follow along. Point number one, how valuable is it to read and study the Bible? 2 Timothy 3, 14 to 17. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned from, and uh, you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Proverbs 3, 13 to 15. Mm. Blessed is a man who finds wisdom. The man who gains understanding for she wisdom is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. Right. She is more precious than rubies. <coughs> Nothing you desire can compare with her. Mm. Mm. God is telling us here that the Bible is more valuable than the rest of the book in the whole human right, history. The Bible is more precious. Mm -hmm. It is priceless. Right. It is the very word of God. True. What is the Bible for? The Bible is for the creator to convey his message to the creation. <laughs> the creator's revelation to us, what he is expecting us, what he has planned for us, what great perfect will he want us to follow him and enjoy the great day of salvation and of gathering of harvesting and going back to him oh, see the other day um we got a new friend uh who joined us in bible talk mm -hmm. and um uh, she has been to church for uh quite a, a an amount of years more than five years yeah. and when we're talking about okay what about following god how do we follow god and i found that not just her but a lot of people a lot of christians out there they are very confused mm -hmm. about what is God calling me to do mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you are you know a year as a as a Christian 10 years or 20 years if you do not know the Word of God you will not know what God wants you to do and the Word of God is in the very Bible that we read yeah. and even kings they were commanded to read the Bible every single day yep. mm -hmm. the Bible is the Word of God God speaking to each one of us God commanding us each one to do his will in a way that he wants us to do it. Mm -hmm. We must listen and listen very, very carefully. Come on. What is the major key to making one's Bible study personally profitable? Mm -hmm. Joshua 1 8. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night yes. so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Right. Yeah. 1 Timothy 4, 13 and 15. Yeah. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Right. See, it is important not just to read the Bible, not to read the Bible in rush, in hastiness, right. not to read the Bible because you're dedicated to read only a few chapters. After you're done reading it, Everything goes out of your mind as well as you close the Bible. Everything is gone. Do not read the Bible like that. Take your time. Really think about what God is teaching you, what you are reading in that day, and how you can use it that day in your daily life. And not just that day, but all the days that it goes on in your life. Meditate on God's law help us immensely in writing them on your heart. Hebrews 8, 10. This is the covenant I will establish with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. Right. I will be their God and they will be my 
people. So if you want to be God's people, God's chosen one, God will write his Bible on your heart. But are you willing to let God to do it to you? Come on. One, two, prayers. Can we talk to God at any time and know that he hears us anytime? First John 5, 14 to 15. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Yeah. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of Him. Mm -hmm. John 16, 23, Jesus said, In that day you will no longer ask me any, anything. Very truly I tell you, my Father would give you whatever you ask wow. in my name. Mm -hmm. Sincere prayer is a very, very powerful tool because the creator of the universe he loves listening to us he loves having a relationship with us yeah. and he loves answering uh, answering our prayers the bible has many scriptures that teach us how to pray that exhorts us to pray to god and many pointing to us to teach us how to pray to god god expects us to maintain a daily two-way relationship yeah. with him he sent us he sent us his message through the bible through yeah. the word of his he's already told us we can freely read it and then we must go to him in prayer so that he can listen to our prayer mm -hmm. yeah. see um the other day i uh i i met another friend a friend who uh, has believed in God uh, for more than 10 years, for 10 to 15 years, many, many years. But when I asked him about, hey, how is your relationship with God? How is your prayer with God? I came to find out that he only prayed to God for a few minutes a day. He only prayed to God because he has needs in his day. Well, all the needs is gone. That's the end of the prayer. Otherwise, he'll become very awkward. He doesn't know what to say to God. Whoa. See, believing in 10 years, but then still not able to have a relationship with God. Wow. Mm. But I want to tell you the uh -huh. good news. Uh -huh. is you can train and you can get to know God deeper and deeper. Uh -huh. But the thing is, you have to have a, hum a heart of humility uh -huh. to ask, well, how do I pray? Uh -huh. As those who know how to pray, how do I pray better? That's how do I be better my relationship with God? Right. That right. takes your heart of humility. Yeah. Are you willing to do that today? The Bible compares the prayers of God's people with sweet smelling incense because they please God. Revelation 5 8. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. God holds our prayer in a golden bowl, in the most yeah. precious bowl that there is. He oh, values yeah. our prayer, and He yeah. wants desperately to answer them. Ooh, Point number three, can we walk with God, and what exactly does that mean? On, First John 2, 6. Whoever claims to live in Him must live as Jesus did. Mm -hmm. Second John 1, 6, and this is love that we walk in obedience to His commands. As you have heard from the beginning, His command is that you walk in love. Yeah. Yeah. First John 2, 3. We know that we have come to know Him if we keep His commands. See, in the Bible, the word walk is often used as representing someone's lifestyle. How do you live your life? How do you live your own life today? To walk according to the word of God, meaning to apply it and put it into action every single day in your life. We must not only just talk the talk, but we must also walk the walk. Mm. We can easily fall in the trap that we always fool ourselves, saying that, saying that Jesus is Lord. We always say that every single morning. But we need to make a decision to make Jesus, our Lord, every single day. Not just to say it. Point number four. Does spiritual fasting also help in drawing close to God? Ezra 8, 21, 23. There, by the Ahava Canal, I proclaim a fast so that we might humble ourselves before our God and ask Him for a safe journey for us and our children. With all our possessions, we fast 
We fasted and petitioned our God about this, and He answered our prayers. Right. Matthew 6, 17-18 But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face yeah. so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to, the, you, to your Father who is unseen. <coughs> and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Joel 2, 12. Come Even on. now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Wow. Mm. Among the spiritual tools that God has given us to use, fasting really can draw us closer to God. Yeah, wow. Because during our fast, we sacrifice what we physically desire and come to God in a spiritual relationship with Him. Ignoring disciplining our flesh. Yeah. Fasting is valuable when we're faced with big problems and yeah. urgently God's help. But it is also extremely important that we have a regular fast as a special way of worshiping God. I right. dedicate this to you, God. Come Not on. for any reason, mm. because you're already mm. good to me. You already love me so right. much. I dedicate this fast uh -huh. to you. And when you sincerely fast, God is pleased and He will help you Ooh. grow spiritually. Yeah. Right. Point number five, meditation. Wow. When we meditate on God's way and His creation, right. can we learn any valuable lessons? Oh, yeah. Romans 1.20 for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, yeah. His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, but being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. Right. Psalms 143, 5. I remember the days of long ago. I meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done. Psalms 145, 5. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. Wow. Mm. See, so God has two primary means of revealing Himself to us human. Mm. The first, first one is writing revelation to us mm. through the prophets, through the, through the people, so the Bible. Mm -hmm. And secondly, it's the evidence of creation. Right. Right. Mm. Creation is truly, truly fascinating if yeah. you dig deep into it, because yeah. we never cease to learn something about our great, amazing creator from the creation. Mm -hmm. And from creation, we learn so much more that we don't even know to appreciate God right now. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage you guys to take time into the nature. Right. Pray around the woods. I know that it is difficult to pray around the woods in, in Hong Kong. There aren't a lot of woods. <laughs> but go in a place, a rural place, that you are alone in nature, praising God yes. about nature. Yeah. And also, you can go on, go on and watch some um, nature programs. Yeah. And I often watch a lot of scientific things on YouTube. Yep. A lot of, watch a lot of things that, well, those people dedicated all their life to study that we would not wow. otherwise know. But little do they know, a lot of scientists, they do not believe in God. Mm -hmm. But what they're providing, what they're giving, yeah. is pointing a lot of people towards Ooh. God. Yeah. But I want you to keep this in mind though. Science itself point us to God yeah. so that we don't have an excuse. Yeah. But it is the Bible that leads us to God. Yeah. So that we cannot just do, we cannot just watch YouTube videos and call it oh, yeah. a good time with God. Right. You're not spending time with God. Yeah. So get down your knees, pray to God, get on your Bible, right. read the Word of God. Come on. Come on. Take the time to sit and think about God. What He has done in history, if of all of your ancestry, <coughs> just to get you sitting here wow. right now with the exact gene, exact eye, Ooh. exact smelling ability, exact height, and exact everything. Wow. He has planned it long ago That's for true. you sitting here right Ooh. now. Yeah. Wow. Praise God for the Bible, for the word He has given you, and praise God for your life, and mm -hmm. it will inspire you greatly. Point number six, will we be much closer to God if we stay away from, from bad influence. Right. First yeah. Corinthians 15, 33. Do not be misled. Bad companies corrupt good character. Yeah. Wow. Proverbs 12, 26. The righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. Wow. Second Corinthians 6, 16 to 18. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, 
says the Lord, Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Come on. Come on. We are continually faced with choices every single day of our life. We're often needing to, ex to expose to all these people that do not believe what we believe. They believe something that is a very, very wicked, which is the world. We have to choose between exposing ourselves to bad influence or exposing ourselves to good influence. And I want to tell you guys, also, it happens also in the church. Yeah. There are bad and good influence in the church. Choose your friends. And of course, if you see the bad influence, go talk to them about it. Don't just, don't just ignore it, okay? That is very unloving. God is very displeased when we choose evil or what will lead us to evil. The mind is like a sponge that soaks up all that you give it. You know, you give it water, it soaks it up. You give it soda, Coca-Cola, it soaks it up anyways. So what goes in, they usually stay in for a period of time. So don't let it even touch the sponge which is your brain. God knows our every thought. So we must do our best to not allow any actions or thoughts that would make us ashamed when we have to come face to face with the Creator. Come on. Point number seven. Do materialism and an over overly busy life interfere with your relationship with God? Luke 16, 13. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Talk about that. Mark 4, 18 to 19. Still others like seed sown among thorns, hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires of other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Wow. First Timothy 6, 9-10 Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Right. See, money in and of itself is not evil. Yeah. Money mm. is not evil. But the love for money yeah. is the root of many, many evils. Yeah. So yes, materialism and a super overly busy life will certainly interfere our relationship with God and interfere with the relationship we have with one another. Yes. They can choke our spiritual life to death like we choking the beautiful garden plants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When money and things start to become overly important to us, they have become our God. Yeah. See, some people look at the first scripture. On, they would think that, okay, I cannot serve two master, right, God? I want to test this. I want to challenge you. I want to serve God, but also full-heartedly serve you. But God says here that if you even have a slightly of a full heart of serving money, you despise God. You hate God. So don't even try God on that. He knows the truth. You don't know the truth. You're just getting your pride over yourself. Okay? Point number eight. Our satanic and demonic influence a significant danger. First Peter 5, 8-9 Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in your, the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Mm. James 4, 7 Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from Come you. Come on! Come Ephesians on. 6, 11-12 Put on the full armor of God so yes. that you can take your stand against de the devil's schemes. Mm -hmm. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but mm -hmm. against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, in Revelation, there's a really scary message. It says in Revelation 12, 9 that Satan, he has deceived the whole world. He wow. deceives the whole world. So even if you are a follower of Christ, 
you will or you have a chance to be deceived by him greatly and do not want to follow God anymore. Wow. And that can only happen if you let your guard down. Yeah. I want to tell you guys, Satan absolutely despises everyone who is sitting here. Satan absolutely hates you. He yeah. does not want anything good to happen to you. Yeah. And the worst thing and the best thing for him to do is to pull you away from God right now. Pull you away from God that you never come back to this room. You never come back to God's the holy people is gathering. That is his smile. That makes wow. him laugh wow. so joyfully. Wow. And I, I want to ask you guys, really think about it. Come we on, attract me. Satan oh, yeah. and, de and, and demons and become vulnerable to them if we live in our sinful, unrepentant oh, life. Right, As you right. see that we are another weak oh, opportunity. We are another weak vessel First, he can take our way, our salvation, our love for God, and then he can use us to take away the faith and the salvation of the people that is around us. Wow. Wow. I want to share with you something that um, I recently learned. Uh, it is kind of about this, but we truly, truly need to watch out about what Satan is doing, infiltrating in this yeah, world. Yeah. I have uh, seen a video about the topic of uh, yoga. So yoga, what does yoga mean? Yeah. It means yoking. So what are you doing is you're yoking with the God that, that, give, that gave yoga. These are positions to worship the Hindu gods. So really truly think about what you are doing. And well, it seems like it doesn't really matter. It's yoga, it's for health. Oh. Yes, it is that. It's seemingly so attractive oh. at first. But truly think about what you are doing, where you're worshiping some other God that you don't even know you're doing. Wow. So be very aware of what Satan is lying to you. In hindsight, it's good, but it is not good. Okay. So point nine, the solution. What is the ultimate way to keep close to God? Acts 2, 38. Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Right. Romans 8, 6 to 9. The mind governed by the, by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to, the, to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the, the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. Mm -hmm. How is it possible for a mortal human to have an intimate and ongoing relationship with the divine God that has created the world? One right. important key of, God's, of, of what we just talked about, it is God's gift of the Holy Spirit. It is not anything that we have ever done that God wants a relationship with us. It is Him, His great love. He wants a relationship with us and He gave us Jesus and also the Holy Spirit to do so. So being a, we are being made and transformed every single day when we have the Holy Spirit to become less human and to become more like Jesus. To receive the Holy Spirit, we must first repent of our sins yeah. and be baptized. Right. That is, there's, there should not be any confusion on that. That is how we get the gift of the Holy Spirit. Right. Right. God desires a close relationship with everyone. In fact, He wants everyone to eventually become His sons and daughters. It is said in 2 Corinthians. And daily prayer is a principal key is a primary key to explain the, all the above points yeah. and a major part of our prayer should be thanking yeah. should be praising yeah. God for the many blessings that he has blessed us with mm -hmm. right. Philippians 4 6 do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your requests to God yeah. see there are many many scriptures throughout the Bible that teaches us how to thank and praise God. We can find so many in Psalms and we can find so many in other parts. Right. So the excuse of, I don't know what to thank God for, that is just your heart not being thankful. Yeah. Your heart not being grateful. 
You are in sin today if you do not thank God. God loves the attitude of gratitude. When God answers a prayer, protects protections or blessings in some other ways, He's not really expecting much, really. He is expecting you to be obedient or keep on being obedient to Him. Keep on asking Him for things and keep on giving Him thanksgivings. Make it a habit to count how many blessings that God has given you. Starting today, because it is only going to increase if you increase, if you keep going on obe obeying Christ Jesus. Stop and think about how many blessings and the benefits that God has already given you. I want to challenge all of you tonight. There are two challenges. First one is to write out a hundred things that you can thank God for and pray about it. It is, all, it is always going to increase. Of course, there are many more things that you will keep on you know, having to add on. So, well, of course, make your choices. If 10 things about God giving you food, because I know that you guys love food, <laughs> then just thank God for food. Just don't thank God for all 10 of ramen, rice, you know. <laughs> okay? So, and the second challenge is to read a psalm out loud, like you're preaching right. to people, like you're preaching to a hundred yes. people that is their first time coming to church. Like you're preaching to them. Read all the Psalms. It is going to take you 150 days to finish this journey. But after that, I can promise you, you will for sure know how to praise God, and you will for sure know how to teach people how to praise God, and to God be all the glory.